In a lot of band settings, it's helpful to have what's called a music director or MD. And many times in a modern band context, that role falls to the keyboard player. Obviously, we're the smartest people in the band, so it makes sense. Uh, but I want to show you some of the things that fall to the music director to fulfill, and especially as you're the keyboard player, what that looks like to fill both roles at the same time. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. My name is Peter, and I'm here to make uh, help you make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. I want to talk through some things that I did as part of a conference that I was involved with last week, leading the band and just helping to uh, make it a, a smoother transition or a smoother, a smoother uh, execution and performance for everybody. We're going to cover a wide range of topics uh, in this, including um, just the overall role of the MD, um, setting up your sounds to, be, to work smoothly, setting up backing tracks and loops, um, also playing um, synth bass for part of it is what I did last weekend. And uh, I want to show you a, a video of just how I um, set up my keyboard rig um, just to keep things streamlined as well. So some of those, all of those things might pertain to you and you can just watch the video all the way through. If you're interested in just a part of it, I'm going to put the timestamp once I get everything edited, to get edited together so you can skip ahead to those points in the video. So, uh, and also the, the links for some of the, the equipment and things that we talk about will be in the description if you want to check out some of the things I talk about. Also, I'm going to link a lot of other videos um, that talk and, and go into more in-depth on some of these topics. So first of all, the role of the MD. And um, at least as far as this group and this conference was concerned, uh, some of the aspects of what we were talking about were more collaborative, like figuring out who was going to be in the group or the choosing the repertoire of songs that we were going to do. And we collaborated on all that. Um, but as I took on the responsibility of music director, there were some other things that I just kind of um, took upon myself to do. And a lot of it was the preparation part of like getting the charts together for one thing. And I know a lot of you um, use like Planning Center or other paid services uh, like that. Um, I've always just used Google Drive or different uh, things that are available to me. Maybe you can help me understand like what the advantages of um, some of the other things are. Um, but what I did was I just took all the, the chord charts, all the lyric charts, and I put them in a Google Drive folder. I shared the link with the band members, shared the link with the conference organizers and the production team, and it worked really smoothly. Everybody was able to, to access that as needed. Um, so we've got all the, the charts in this folder, uh, as well as a spreadsheet listing all the songs for the different sessions. And um, this was actually something that I, um, I mostly put together as well. And that's probably more of a worship leader aspect of just choosing... Uh, what songs go where, there, especially with a conference, there are a lot of different considerations. Like you have to weigh what you know people are going to know with some of the newer ones and how you mix those in to keep an overall flow. Um, how to arrange the keys so that they um, they work together, who's leading which songs. And then um, also just putting down the song order um, so that the production team like lighting cues and the lyrics people could all be on the same page with us. So I put together that. Um, I was also in charge of communicating with the production team and the sound techs. Um, so I, I put together like a list of all of our inputs and everything. And that was all in that spreadsheet, which again, I put in a Google Drive folder. So it was accessible to everyone. I think it's also helpful if you're the MD to be kind of the main person who communicates with the production team from both sides of the equation. I think that for the production team to have one person that they know to go to um, with what they need from the band and also from the band to be able to go through you so you don't have however many people in the band trying to talk all at once to the production team and you can kind of just help facilitate communication i think is a big help and just keeps everything moving smoothly and that's that's part of the role as the md or the music director now because uh you're not only playing your parts you're also the md but you're kind of setting that expectation for preparation and so i felt it was really important that i go into like even the earliest rehearsals having my sounds down, having the tracks organized and ready to go. Because if I had waited until the last rehearsal to have all that stuff together, then that would have just sent a message to the, the rest of the team members that, hey, we're going to be lackadaisical about this, and so you can hold off on this until it's crunch time. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I was setting a good example for other team members to follow, whether they did or not. Uh, I wanted to provide as, as solid of a foundation as I could, as well as setting that expectation. So uh, what that amounted to was pretty early on, I ended up spending like 10 hours from like a Thursday through Saturday putting all my songs and tracks together. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I played all of my sounds through main stage and uh, put out all my tracks together through Ableton Live. So I ended up with uh, like six main stage concerts, seven Ableton sessions um, to get through the concert, to get to the conference. So 
um, to create the main stage concerts, I used something that's a little bit different and I changed my template a little bit. I did start with the template for all the sessions. So, um, but I changed it a little bit. And what I did was I programmed these four pads on my MK, MPK mini to go directly to certain patches. Like I wanted to be able to go directly to grand piano and then upright piano. And both of those had pads layered in that I could mix in. Um, but I wanted to just be able to go right to that. If, you know, if something else failed, I could go right to that. Um, here's a Rhodes and a B3 organ. And the way you do that, you have to keep them in the same order at the top of the, uh, uh, of the list. So it, it's dependent upon like where they are in the, in the uh, patch list. Um, but you just set that. And then you have to go up to concert level, click on the pad, and then set the range max and min to the same one. You just select the patch there, and then it'll go uh, to that patch directly. And so that was just kind of a little tweak. Uh, I did end up using it a lot, but that was there, and nice to have that when I needed it. Uh, from there, I, I mainly put together patches in two different ways. Um, the first way was I would have primarily one, and I did have a different patch for each song, even if I was only changing uh, like the pad sound that was underneath my piano. I had a different patch uh, for each song. And uh, for a lot of the faster songs, I would choose one patch and keep that patch for the whole song. So for example, uh, this is for Our God Reigns. And I just played with uh, an acoustic piano. Uh, being more kind of track and guitar driven, I didn't need to do a lot of dynamics changes for that song. And so I would just keep uh, that same patch throughout. Now, for something that a lot of the slower songs, what I would do is um, build a patch that had four different dynamic levels. So it was actually a set containing four separate patches. And so I would uh, just have like a soft level. So here's the soft level, which is just a piano and then this pad underneath. Had the cutoff set pretty low there. And then I could go down for uh, medium, which adds a little bit of a brightness to it, and then a, a full-on arpeggiated. So that was for the loud parts of the songs. And uh, that was kind of the main approach that I used with the main stage tracks. Now something that was different in this is that, and, and I'm actually kind of used to this, is um, our bass player um, had a pre uh, previous engagement, previous commitment, and so he wasn't able to join us for a couple of sessions. And so we talked about getting somebody else to do the whole conference, but I was like, eh. just overall, I felt like it was going to be okay for him to be there part of the time, and then for me to cover synth bass for a lot of the time. So I want to talk about the different ways that I covered synth bass. And one of them was to um, just create a layer uh, on the bottom of my patches. And let me um, solo that so you can hear it on its own, but this is just a sampled bass guitar sound. So let me show you what this sounds like in the mix of everything else that's going on at this point of the song. So here's the loop. We're gonna go to the fast part of the song. And And that slide worked really well going from the bridge back into the chorus. So that was kind of a cool thing to do. But anyway, I have that bass sound up to up to B, and then it's only piano and the other layers up from there. So that was one thing that I would do. Another thing that I would do is have the bass in the track itself. So here is um, Our God Reigns Forever. And I, I need to skip a little skip ahead a little bit to get to the part that has the bass in it. the bass and that's in the multi-track and I routed um, that out through um, uh, the external output uh, six on my interface same thing in um, uh, main stage let me show you this so here we have the slap bass or no slap bass and so I send that to this aux bus which sent it out through um, aux six through master six and then uh, mix it from there so anyway the bass was always going out through the same place so one way was through a, just a layer um, with like a bass guitar sound. Um, another way was through the track. And another way was to have an arpeggiated synth bass. So let me switch gears and I'll show you that in a second.
The third type of bass that I did was uh, something new for me, and I used an arpeggiated synth bass. Um, so it was actually during some of the slower songs that just needed a more uh, intense moment. So this was uh, from Oh Praise the Name. And here's what it sounded like. Just, just a synth sound uh, with an arpeggiator on it. I had it set to an eighth note that synced up to the tempo in main stage, which was this. So this is for a really loud section of the song. And then this is so it's a synth kind of bass layer underneath. Here is what it sounds like. So that was a nice touch. So even when our bass player was there, I added that in, in a way that worked well. Um, so it was just kind of another layer underneath, but just put an arpeggiator on that, just kind of make it a synth or uh, an eighth note or even uh, uh, like a 16th note going on. So that was another way that I used bass. Let's talk about how I put the tracks together for this. Um, there are two basic things that I did. We had um, some songs where we had a sequence of the whole song straight through. So I would start it at the beginning, just let it run. We had a prearrangement of what we were going to do, uh, how we were going to do the order of the song. And uh, we did that for such songs as, let me pull up the list, like Our God Reigns Forever um, from Israel and New Breed, um, as well as You Are Good, same artist. Uh, Drenched in Love from Bethel, um, and we did So Will I from Hillsong United. And um, so some of mine has purchased the multi-tracks. Um, some of them I had um, uh, recorded myself. But anyway, you hit... You know, you hit play and you go straight through the song and sometimes you have the cues you can follow along. Um, so that makes it pretty easy easy to do. One of the things I did with these, which which took a little bit of extra time, but I think it was worth it. And that is sometimes when you use those and they go through the same thing, it's always the same thing every time. It's helpful to be able to edit it and, and do it in a different format. For example, Our God Reigns Forever. Uh, we did it one night uh, in the normal version where it starts with the intro and all that. And I just wanted to change things up and do it a, a little bit kind of more streamlined, uh, a little bit shorter approach the second night. And so what I did was I cut it off. So um, it started at the pre-chorus, um, but then it had a double pre-chorus. And the way I did was that I, I edited the tracks together in Logic, just because that's easier for me. And that's what I'm used to. There's a way to do it in um, Ableton, but I just did it in Logic and then bounced the tracks out to Ableton. So just to freshen things up, I. Blessing and honor, glory and power to our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours. In blessing and honor, blessing and honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours. So it just changes it up a little bit instead of like, oh, we're doing that song again. We're doing it the same exact way. Um, it just kept it fresh. So we did the song mostly the same from that point out. But that's one of the things you can do to keep those uh, sequence tracks the same. For most of our songs, I probably did uh, loops more often. And I set these up kind of the same way I do my, um, my sounds and that I have like a soft dynamic level, medium, and loud. So for... Uh, tremble here are the different ones and I have a map that on keys in a certain way there's the soft here's medium so it adds the snare a little bit a little bit louder and then here's the loud and if you look here it'll it'll loop this is just a one measure loop and it will loop as long as I need it and it'll stop at that point but the cool thing about this is is you can link this and I have another video that shows you how to do it. You can link this to your patch changes so that if you have your different dynamic loops set up with or different dynamics with your loops, you can set that up with your um, with your patches so that when I go to the soft, you see that it automatically switched here. Um, when I go to the loud, it switches to the loud patch. And so that just streamlines things. And it's one less thing to uh, to think about as you're going through it. So there are two different 
two different ways that I use the tracks, like the ones that go all the way through and the ones that are set up with um, the different dynamics levels. So um, all in all, when you're when you're trying to wear these multiple hats, you want to try to find ways to streamline it. And um, that was what I did with my setup as well. So let me show you this video of how I did um, my setup, which is pretty pretty similar to this. Up a conference and wanted to just show you my setup real quick. Uh, nothing too uh, different than what I normally do. It's pretty much what I have at home. It's my uh, Yamaha S80 and the Akai MK Mini uh, that I talked about recently. Um, the Akai is just a USB, USB into my uh, MacBook, which is there. And the keyboard is just a MIDI cable out, and that all goes to my audio interface, which is uh, a Motu. If I can get on there, a Motu Ultralight MK3, and, and then coming out of the back of that are uh, six outputs. Two of them are for the keys mix, uh, which goes to this DI, this stereo DI. Two of them go to this stereo DI for tracks. One goes to click, and one goes to synth bass, uh, which I had to cover for a couple of sessions. Uh, so, like I said, it's pretty much the same thing that I have at home. Um, it was pretty easy to set up and worked uh, awesome throughout the whole conference. So there was a lot riding on it with all the tracks and all the different sounds I was using. Um, it was really solid and uh, yeah, it worked really well. So uh, Definitely check out the, the upper right hand. If you click the eye in the upper right hand corner of the video, it'll take you to some different videos that go more in depth on some of these things that I've talked about in this video. So um, let me know if you have any questions about this or if you have any suggestions, maybe why Planning Center is a good idea. Or if you have suggestions on new, IV, new ideas for videos and things that you want to hear about, some things to help you move forward as a keyboard player, as a worship leader, or as a music director for that matter. So uh, let me know. Let me hear uh, what you think. And uh, stay tuned uh, for some other uh, videos coming up. And uh, we'll see you soon.